Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for checking out yet another one of my videos. I really do appreciate it. So we're in the middle of uh, painting my daughter's room. She is a big girl now and doesn't want the little girl pink. And so while we were at it, I thought I would trim out the window that's in her room. As you can see, there's no trim casing around it at all. And it's got uh, kind of a composite, like imitation marble uh, sill or stool, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to trim it out and make it look a lot better. So I start by taking out that sill. And to do that, um, I just use a razor blade to cut the caulk line and uh, go all the way around. I don't want, when I pull it out, I want to tear up too much drywall um, when it comes out. And this is just held in place. I've done a couple more of these in my house. And this is just held in place with some construction adhesive. And so I know that it comes off pretty easily. And I use... A demo chisel. I like to have at least one chisel that's pretty beat up for jobs like this to um, kind of break it loose. There you go. I chunked up the drywall right there, but I'm going to cover that up later with some trim so it's not a problem. So just going through with my mallet and chisel trying to break it loose from the construction adhesive and it's been in there. This house was built in 96. So it's been in there almost 25 years. Um, and then I come back with the crowbar and really start to pry it out of there without trying to damage the window. So you can see I'm kind of rocking it back and forth, taking my time and um, going through to get that thing out of there. And once that sill was out, I was um, a little bit nervous about seeing some mold under uh, in, the, in the actual framing of the wall. Um, but luckily there wasn't any. This window has held up uh, really well over the past couple of decades and um, nice dry inside. If there was, I would um, take care of that and probably have to reseal or get a new window, um, but luckily there wasn't. So here I am just pulling off that construction adhesive um, using that demo chisel again to get all that off. And then uh, I vacuumed out that entire pocket to make sure there wasn't any like chunks of drywall or any sort of debris that would get in the way of the new piece coming in. So I took my measurement and um, I'm going to head down to the shop to cut out the new sill here in just a minute. I do have a couple other videos, uh, similar projects to this. I've uh, trimmed out an arch window in our master bedroom as well as a bay window on our first floor. Um, and I am specifically making this video quite a bit longer than those two. I really wanted to take my time to talk about uh, what I'm doing here exactly in each step. This is a video I wish I had seen um, when I first started doing uh, these windows. So this is a piece of window sill or window stool molding you can pick up from the big box store. I believe this one is five and a quarter um, by three quarters and it comes in 12 or uh, 17 foot lengths. I think you can get them in 18 or eight foot lengths as well. And it's got a little um, profile on the front that you'll be able to see here in a minute. And this is finger joint pine. They might sell it in MDF, uh, but MDF is a bad product to use if there's any chance of water because just a drop of water in MDF makes it um, swell. That's basically like particle board. Um, so this finger joint pine is the product that you want to use if you are going with wood. And I just use a speed square here and try to transfer my um, measurements, the depth of the window as well as the width of it to make sure that this new sill is going to fit in there as nicely as possible. Uh, the space isn't square. If I wanted to, I could really take my time and scribe and get exact lines. I didn't do that for this project. I use um, some caulk and paint later. That goes a long way. Like I said, this is in my daughter's bedroom, so it's not going to be seen by a ton of different people. But I go through and mark out all of my measurements. So what I'm doing here is doing the width of the window inside. And then when the stool comes outside the window, which you'll see uh, once I bring it back up here, it uh, is going to need to extend and kind of wrap around the frame of the window. And that is to be able to receive the casing, the window casing that I'm gonna put around here uh, in a minute. And so I'm cutting out those notches now where it's going to come out and wrap around the window. And I'm just using my jigsaw for that. Um, that's the, the best tool. There's a couple other saws. You can do this by hand if you really wanted to, but using my jigsaw to cut out those notches. And what that's gonna do is leave uh, this kind of wing where the profile is. Um, and, uh, and in order to make that look really professional, you wanna have that profile come back in what's called a return. And so I'm cutting uh, the wings on a 45 degree angle right now. And then that profile is going to be able to come around uh, uh, into the return, into the wall. I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. So cutting these um, little chunks here that I'm gonna use to make that return. It's just a 45 degree angle. Um, and we'll see what that looks here now. 
So to cut the return, I use these uh, chunks I just cut and kind of line up the profile exactly how I want it to be so you can see it's coming around the front of my left hand there and then I mark that angle so then I want it to turn back into the wall. So I cut that little 45 degree chunk off and then bring that, um, I'll do the other side here, and then I bring that back over to the sill and you can see exactly uh, what this is going to look like now. So here you can see that return is out in front and then it comes right back into the wall giving it that really professional look. You could use a router to do this. That would still leave that end grain exposed and you probably want that you, you want the edge grain because that's going to um, look a lot better. It's not going to absorb paint like end grain would. Uh, and so here I'm just using a little bit of CA glue to attach that um, that return. And once that dries with the activator, it dries super quick, 10 or 15 seconds or so. Um, and then you can see exactly how it's going to look. And that's how you get that real professional look where the profile returns back into the wall. And I'll sand this seam a little bit. It does not have to be perfect. Most of it gets covered up by the casing, um, but I sand it a little bit just to smooth it up. And so now you can see I'm back up in the bedroom, putting that sill in place making sure it fits. You might have to make a couple of adjustments. You could use um, your jigsaw again to cut wherever you need to to make sure you get as tight a fit uh, as possible. Because like I said, most of these windows aren't gonna be uh, square, or these walls aren't gonna be square rather. So use some construction adhesive and lay that down and then put the new um, sill in place. And there you can see the wings really well, how they come around um, kind of outside into the room and then uh, to the left and right of the window to make it so that casing can come down and sit on top of that sill um, really nice. And so I'm using some uh, two inch brad nails here. Uh, you can see I'm kind of banging it into place with my uh, fist just to get a good ad adhesion to that adhesive. And then using the brad nails to, um, to punch it into uh, the actual framing. And once that construction adhesive cures, uh, this is not going to go anywhere. Here you can see that chunk of uh, drywall under there uh, on my left too. That's all okay. It's going to be covered up by um, what's called the apron. And I'm going to make that piece uh, here next. So I'm measuring for the apron. I want it to sit about a quarter inch inside of the bottom of that profile. And so I'm getting the measurement for it now. And then I'll head back down to the shop. Um, this casing is called uh, RB3. You can get it um, at any of the big box stores and it is uh, a little bit of a thicker um, kind of uh, uh, thicker profile than uh, the builder grade casing that we had in our house. So we're doing this around our doors and windows um, very, very slowly. It's taken us a couple of years because it's, uh, it's pretty expensive and it, um, it takes a while to do. So anyway, uh, I'm cutting this very similar uh, to the stool in that I want to get that return. And so I'm cutting it on a 45 degree uh, uh, cut at the length that I just took. And you can see I'm coming down and there was a nice drop there. It didn't chinger up the end too bad. Um, and then cutting that, uh, that return piece that I need, just that little 45 return. And we'll glue that on the same way as I did the stool and uh, get that really professional uh, look. And this is the right way to do it for, this is the way I was taught from the um, construction worker that I worked with when I was in high school and college. And there may be other ways to do it, but again, this is the way that I was taught and I think it looks uh, really sharp. So you can see how you get that uh, nice finished professional look there um, with the return on there. So bring that up to the bedroom and um, attach that, cover up those uh, those chunks I took out of drywall. Um, luckily, don't have to go back and repair that. And just to hear this uh, into um, both the wall and the stool uh, or the sill and um, using the two inch 18 gauge brad nails for that as well. And if you wanted to, you could stop right here. You could caulk and paint this and it would look really sharp. Um, in my opinion, it would look a lot better than the composite uh, sill that was in place before I started. Um, you don't have to case around the entire window if you didn't want to. I have seen some homes uh, that, that stop at this step. Um, but because we're here and because we just uh, ourselves like the look of it, we're gonna um, finish that up around. If you did do that, if you just left the stool, you wouldn't need to go uh, as far out on the wings as I did. I did three and a half inches because the casing is three and a quarter inches and I wanted it to um, have about a quarter inch overhang that you'll see here in some close-ups in a bit. 
So I go ahead and get my measurements. Um, I want a quarter inch reveal all the way around that, uh, that drywall and um, getting that measurement. Now, if your window is not square, if it's off uh, by an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch, you're gonna wanna do your best to still make sure that your casing is square so you can get nice 45 degree angles uh, on the um, on the side and the top casing. If you don't, if you get if you take different measurements because it's off an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, you're going to get um, some pretty significant gaps uh, in your casing when you go to um, install it. So, just taking this uh, back down to the shop and getting those cuts that I just took measurements of, and you can see I'm sneaking up on the line here, um, making sure to get as precise of a measurement as possible, and again dropping it uh, like a total pro. So I like to measure both the left and the right sides first and get those pieces installed um, and then use that to get my uh, top casing measurement. And so I'm getting those uh, uh, left and right pieces cut now. And I'll bring those back up. I put a little bit of wood glue down at the bottom where this casing is going to uh, meet the sill. I don't know if that really does much. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It's end grain onto uh, face grain and there's also primer in between. So. Um, it probably doesn't hurt, so I just put a little bit on there. And here you can see how it's going to look once the um, casing is on. Uh, in our opinion, this is the exact look that we're going for. We think, so, think it looks really sharp. And so I just uh, attached this again with some 18-gauge, um, uh, 2-inch brad nails. And I'm not going all the way to the right because there is a metal um, corner piece on that window uh, for the drywall. And I don't want to put... Uh, these nails, sometimes if they try to go into that metal, they bend and uh, kind of uh, get redirected and don't really go into the, the two by four behind it that I was going for. So I'm trying to offset it a little bit and put those nails in the um, kind of through the center of the casing and going into uh, the actual framing of the wall. So I did the left side first and then come into the right side and you can see there how the stool sticks out uh, about another quarter inch of um, the actual casing. Uh, giving it the look that we're going for and so attaching this piece um, with the brads and then I'll come back and uh, clean up that glue and then get ready to do the top piece. For the top I've seen some tricks where you take a longer piece and kind of set it up on top of there um, in reverse and use your pencil to mark exactly where the casing is touching. I've tried that method before and I never seem to get as accurate as a result as when I um, just do it uh, using my tape measure. So that's what I did this time. Um, and so you can see that piece kind of sits up on there nicely. I use a little bit of wood glue in between uh, or between the two um, seams there at that miter and then attach it in place uh, using those same brads. And I'll put um, brads all along the top, uh, four or five of them. And then I'll also attach it to, uh, to the left and the right casing um, with a couple of brads in the um, sides as you'll see here in just a minute and this was a nice project to do you can see i'm half painted there uh on the on the right as, as well as the crown molding at the top it was nice uh to do this because we did the paint in two separate days and so i would let, do this while i was letting the um let the paint dry uh, in between coats so to fill the nail holes i just use a little bit of lightweight um, spackle i used to use caulk for this that's a terrible idea because it shrinks over time and you get this dimple in there um, so i use caulking now and i use that both to fill the nail holes as well as um, the seams uh, the for the seams they're not perfect i am not a trim carpenter uh, definitely an amateur in every sense of the word and so um, a little bit of caulk and paint and spackle goes a long way for me, especially in my own house where it's just for, for our enjoyment. So I go through and fill in all those imperfections there um, with, uh, with the spackle and really kind of jam it into any voids that I have uh, and then come back later uh, with a wet sponge after this dries, um, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But I'm not going to do that uh, next. Next I'm going to caulk and because we're going to come back and paint this wall, I can do a nice thick bead of caulk. Don't need to worry right now about getting the cleanest line ever. Um, and so caulk the wall, or, or caulked where the trim meets the wall, both inside and outside, um, as well as uh, down at the stool. I just use um, a silicone-based uh, paintable uh, fast-dry caulk. This is by uh, DAP, which I think the, the actual caulk is called Alex, uh, or Alex Plus, rather. 
And the key is to make sure that it is um, paintable. If you use 100% silicone, you're probably not going to be able to paint it. And so make sure whatever caulk you get is a paintable caulk. So going around and filling in all those seams uh, in the sill and making sure that um, uh, to clean up any of the areas that I uh, damaged while pulling out the old part, doing the demo. And um, it's definitely not perfect, but again, it's for our purposes. Once we uh, close the blinds and, and uh, you know, it's in our daughter's room, nobody's ever going to see it. So I wasn't worried about spending too much time making the uh, drywall repair perfect. So it's good enough for our purposes. So going back now that the spackle's dry, I use a sanding sponge and I like to get it wet. And the reason that I do this is for a couple of reasons. One, it um, really cuts down on the dust. Uh, and then two, with it being wet, you almost get this like slurry while you're sanding it and it leaves this really smooth finish. You just do it really lightly, let the, um, let the foam block do all the work and uh, come back and wipe it with a paper towel and you get this super smooth finish. Um, and I've been using this method for a long time and once you paint it, you can um, barely see any nail holes. If you're not looking for them, if you don't know exactly where they are, you'll never be able to see them. So I used that sanding block to get everything cleaned up, um, and this is basically about done. I uh, don't need to use this on the caulk. Caulk doesn't really sand at all. Um, you do need to probably rinse that sponge every, um, uh, if you use all the sides of it, go and rinse it in your utility sink and then uh, use it up again because the caulk kind of like, a, or the, sorry, the spackle, like I said, kind of creates the slurry and that decreases the effectiveness of it. So once everything was dry enough to paint, I went through and uh, got everything painted. I'm not going to bore you too much with that, um, but this is coming to the end of the project. And so, again, this is a, a project that I wish or a video that I wish I had seen when I started trimming out our windows. So I hope that it was helpful. Um, if you're looking to do this in your house, it's a great way to upgrade your builder grade uh, house. And um, we have really enjoyed the way that this is um improve things in our home we did this all along the first floor and so we're moving up to the second floor now and here you can see the finished project product we are going to replace these blinds um, so those need to be updated a little bit but uh, you can see the the casing and the window uh, sill or stool uh, as well as the apron and we're really happy with the way that this turned out so thanks for watching if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe and like i've got more videos like this coming up and thanks for watching